In this video we will have a closer look at various types of accounts in MetaMask. Both Trezor and MetaMask follow the same standard to generate the wallet. This means that every single wallet is derived from a recovery seed and a passphrase. If the user does not enter any passphrase, an empty string is used instead. In such case, the wallet is derived just from the recovery seed. Let's get started. As soon as you start MetaMask for the first time, it will give you two options. You can either recover an existing wallet, or create a new one. In this video we will create a new wallet to see the whole process. First of all we need to set up a password. It will protect your MetaMask extension from a potential misuse only. Unlike the recovery seed, the password won't help you to recover your MetaMask wallet. Now MetaMask enables you to write down your recovery seed. It is a list of words in a specific order needed for the recovery. You'd better keep it offline at some safe place. Never disclose your recovery seed to anyone. In the next step MetaMask wants you to re-enter the recovery seed in the correct order. Just to make sure you have written down your seed correctly. Remember, the order is as important as the list itself. Once the initialization is complete, you will be presented with your default MetaMask account. Let's see what the receiving address looks like. The MetaMask account is not related to Trezor Wallet whatsoever. Therefore, to recover this account MetaMask recovery seed is needed. For accessing Trezor Wallet, you need to pair your device with MetaMask. Simply go to the menu, choose the option Connect Hardware Wallet, and select Trezor. Then Trezor Connect will ask you for permission to export the public key. After that you can enter a passphrase in case you want to access a hidden wallet. If you are not familiar with the passphrase, please learn about the feature before you start using it. Anyway, to see various types of accounts in this video, we will set up a passphrase. After typing the passphrase you must confirm it on the Trezor device as well. Then we get a list of addresses derived from Trezor seed and the passphrase we just entered. Let's select the first one and unlock it. Again, to see the whole address of this account, navigate to account details. Right now we have two accounts available. The first one is MetaMask default account. The second one is a Trezor account protected by a passphrase. And finally, we will add one more Trezor account with no passphrase to see the difference. The process will be the same, except we do not enter any passphrase this time. Now let's have a look at what accounts we have. There is one MetaMask account generated from MetaMask Seed. And then we have two Trezor accounts, both derived from the same seed. However, look at the simplified derivation scheme. It's different for each wallet. The MetaMask account is derived from MetaMask Seed only, with no passphrase. The second account is generated from Trezor Seed and our secret passphrase. And the last account is derived from the same Trezor Seed, but without any passphrase. In the end, it does not mean anything else but generating different addresses. Lastly, there is one more important thing to mention. For signing outgoing transactions from these accounts, the appropriate combination of recovery seed and passphrase must be in use. If not, then such account becomes a watch-only account. What does it mean? You could still see such account listed, but you won't be able to sign any transactions, due to a missing private key. In other words, you could still deposit assets into such account, but you couldn't withdraw any funds from there. Hopefully, this video helped you to understand different types of accounts in MetaMask. Thanks for watching.